Hello friends, look at this beautiful exercise we have here. Ask us to find the shaded area in the quadrilateral. As always, you can solve it in your notebook and leave me your answer in the comments. We have here a right triangle, half a circle, and well, we have a quadrilateral. We don't know the height of the rectangle or the base either. To be able to determine this area and this area here and subtract it from the quadrilateral's area, that's what we need to do, but we don't know this distance from here, not this distance from there, up to here. That's what we're going to find out right now. Now, we have a 12 and 16 here, we have a two sides of a right triangles. Here there are 90 degrees. So we can find the hypotenuse, which is also the diameter of the semicircle. So we say that Pythagoras means the hypotenuse squared, right? Equals the sum of the two sides squared. That is a squared plus b squared. So if we solve for h, then we get h to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Very well, and this is going to be the hypotenuse we are looking for now. Let's replace data then. Either side can be A or B. In this case, I'll say this side is A and this side here will be B. Ready? So since A is 16, we need to put 16 squared plus B squared, which this is B, so 12 squared. Very well, we have that h is going to be equal to 16 squared plus 12 squared, that gives us 400. Fantastic! Now the square root of 400 is 20. Great, phenomenal, we now have the hypotenuse, that is also the diameter of this semicircle. So we can calculate the area of this semicircle. We can also find this area, but we still need to calculate the area of the quadrilateral. See, so here we have it at H is 20, right? Half, which would be the radius from this point, which is the middle of this semicircle. So from here, it will be 10 and 10. And from here to here, there will also be days. So it's understood because this whole part is 20, then 10 plus 10 gives us 20. Now we can draw a line parallel to this quadrilateral's base, passing exactly through the circle center. Let's do it. We're going to draw a line here. Notice in this way and it reaches right here to the tangent point of the circle with this side at the height of the ring just right. Now I'll tell you what happened right through the middle because it came out a bit lower so we can also draw another line from here to there, but we'll do that later for now. This line here divides my large triangle into two triangles. Look at this triangle here. If this is parallel to this line here, there must also be 90 degrees here. And if a line uh, cross two parallel lines, then its angles this angle here, which we're going to call alpha angle, should also be equal to this angle over here. Ready, and now we have to 90 degrees plus the alpha angle plus this angle make up the 180 degrees of the large triangles. And from the small triangle too, so we will call that angle, angle beta. Notice that the beta angle is the same for both the small and the large triangle. So we can say that the two triangles are similar. So knowing they are similar, I will draw the triangles here. This will be the big triangle. And this one here will be the small triangle. Sorry for the drawing. Over here done. So the big triangle has 12. Here below has 16. And here the hypotenuse is 20. Very well, and for the small triangle, since we don't know this side, we'll call it we. And we don't know the value of this side either, we're going to call it x. Very good, but we can make a direct relationship between the big triangle and the small triangle, because both are similar. The hypotenuse of the small triangle we know is 10. 
So we have two similar triangles. We can say the following. We can make a relation okay. between Bye. this side of the triangle and this hypotenuse. And between this side and the hypotenuse, remember that this here is 10. And the bottom part was x. So we can say that 12, that 20, pay close attention. We can say that 12, let's write that down here. What 12? That 20, how? Like it's already a 10 as it is. 10 to 10, fantastic. And from here we can clear up well. We can move the 10 to the other side and we have 12 times 10 over. Event and this is going to be equal to y. Right, we can eliminate a 0 from below with a 0 from above and we're left with 12 divided by 2, so 12 divided by 2 is 6. Fantastic, we have obtained y, y equals 6. Very well, then this part here measures 6 and since the whole part here measures 2, so from here to here it will also measure 6. Now let's determine this part here which is x. So for that we are going to relate this part which is the base of the large triangle with the hypotenuse and the base with the hypotenuse of the small triangle. So we say that 16 is to 20, catch them. Extra small 10, x is 10, fantastic, and we do the same thing we did here. We move on, we leave the 10. Multiplying on the other side leaves us 16 times 10 over. We eliminate a 0 from the top with a 0 from the bottom. And we have 16 divided by 2, which is 8. Fantastic. We have also found the value of x, which is 8. So this here that we called x is going to be 8. 8, and now we can also draw another line notice from here, which is the tangent point between the circle and this part of the quadrilateral line that goes through the circle center. So let's do it. A line that goes through the center of the circle to the other side. No, and what happens here? Notice that if this is worth 6, here it will also be worth 6, right? And if the top is worth 8, this part as it's parallel to this part here is also going to be 8. And since the whole base of the large triangle is 16, so here I have 8 and therefore the base of this small triangle is also going to be 8. Phenomenal and now we can almost know what the result is. Pay close attention here we have 8 and up here what we have is 10 fantastic because that is the circle's radius. And we had already found the circle's radius it is 10. So if this is 10 and down here I have from here to here 8, it has to be this part we said we don't know, which is 2. Yes, because 8 plus 2 are the 10 from here, since these lines are parallel both, and look, it's the same. Now we just need one more piece of data, which is this distance here. But notice that we now have this part and 6, which gives us 12. We know that up to here is 12. And we also know that from here down to here is 16. Why? Because look, this here is also the radius. So it measures 10. And this part here measures 6. 10 plus 6, 16. And this part here measures 12. How much more to read 16? Well, 4. We have all the data to find the shaded area. I'm going to erase this here to continue. So then we have that the shaded area will be equal to the area of the quadrilateral. The area of the quadrilateral minus the area of this triangle. What is a right triangle? And subtract the area of this semicircle which we will symbolize in the following way. Let's draw a circle here and put over 2. This is how we symbolize the area of a semicircle, meaning half of a circle. So we see that the shaded area is going to be equal to the area of a quadrilateral is base times height. Very good minus the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. And the area of a semicircle is pi times radius squared. Pi times radius squared is the area of a whole circle. Divided by 2 for a semicircle then. 
So we see that the shaded area is going to be equal. What is the base of the quadrilateral? It is 18 because from here to here measures 16 and with these two it would be 18. Well multiplied by the height, the height is 12 plus 4 which is 16 minus the base of the triangle which is 16 times the height of the triangle which is 12 uh, about 2 minus pi by the radius of the semicircle which turns out to be 10. All of this here is the diameter, the radius is only from here to which is 10. Uh, 10 squared over 2 very well we have that the shaded area is equal to 18 times 16 which is 288 less over here we can find half of 2 which is 1 and half of 12 which is 6 and 6 times 16 gives us 96 less by here we would have a and notice 10 squared would be 100 let's put it here it would be 110 squared half of 12 is 6 and half of 100 is 50 so we would have 50 pi fantastic ready and so the shaded area will be equal to 288 minus 96 which is 192 minus 50 pesi very well and this over here is square units which is great because it doesn't give us meters or centimeters because they are square units and we have already found the solution to this impressive exercise fascinating now we can also find around here we can say that the shaded area is approximately because we are going to use pi so pi is a number that has infinite decimals but approximately the solution is 34.9 Let's write this 34.9 properly. 434.9 square units phenomenal. Let me know in the comments if you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like so you don't miss the next challenge. See you another time. Bye bye. Nah.